This is only 20 years, maybe 20 years after the conquest. And so there's this cloud of associations, sacrifice, blood, the divine. Fine arts illuminate our present and explicate our past. SCAD professors teach brilliant young creators every day. And in this series, we reveal the works that most inspire our experts. This is SCAD class. Today we experience a work of art that tells the story of the indigenous peoples of Mexico during earth-shaking events of the 16th century. Joining me for today's conversation is SCAD professor of art history, Aubrey Hobart. This is a piece called the Mass of St. Gregory. It was created in 1539 as a gift for the Pope, Pope Paul III. This was commissioned by a man named Don Diego de Juanitzin. He was the son-in-law and nephew of Motecuzoma II, the last Aztec emperor. So he was the governor of Mexico City at the time, and he wanted to give the Pope a gift because the Pope had written this document called the Sublimis Deus, which is a proclamation that the indigenous peoples of the Americas were fully human and could not be enslaved. Instead, they had to be converted to Christianity. So this was a thank you gift to the Pope for that purpose. He could have made it in any kind of material, oil painting or a golden statue or something, but instead he chose feathers because they were so important to his own people. That blue color in the background, those are feathers. And these birds are very small. Yes. Their feathers are also very small. So it's about a hundred feathers per square inch. Oh my goodness. on that background. And this piece is about two feet by two and a half feet. There were also exotic birds that they got from Southern Mexico. Feathers were the ultimate luxury material. So nobles wore them, the best warriors got to wear them. Anybody who was a deity impersonator or going to be sacrificed would wear feathers. They were so, so important. The iridescence of the feathers is so fascinating. It seems to me it just brings life to the works. It's kind of almost a what we might look at as animation today because they can kind of subtly move, can't they? Absolutely. Part of the feather is glued down, but part of it is loose. So if there's any kind of breeze, then these objects are slightly moving and they're catching the light differently. There was a group of Aztec feather workers, the Amanteca, whose only job it was to make featherwork objects. They were one of the higher tiers of craftspeople and they had a certain neighborhood that they got to live in in Tenochtitlan where they had their own schools, they had their own temples of worship. And the reason for that is there are so many associations in the Mesoamerican mind with feathers. Yes, tell me. Feathers are associated with sacrifice, with the gods, with light, with heat, with blood, uh, all of these things with the divine. And what I find so fascinating about this piece is that if a European or somebody who comes from the Western tradition looks at the subject matter, we're seeing Christ. Yes. And we're having so many of those same associations. So as European viewers or descendants, we're seeing that from the subject matter. But an indigenous person would get the same message from the material rather than the subject matter. How does one conserve feather work? It's a lot of dusting, mm -hmm. <laughs> keeping it in a cool, dry, dark environment. It's really a challenge because these are organic materials. So we really focus more on preservation than, than anything else. We're not gonna be able to recreate it. Yeah, very special. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about some of the symbolism inherent in the work. In terms of subject matter, what we're looking at here is a depiction of a scene that was said to have happened in the sixth century. Mm. So at the bottom there, we have Pope Gregory the Great, a sixth century Pope. He was trying to explain transubstantiation, this Catholic notion that the bread of the Eucharist actually becomes the body of Christ when you consume it. Mm -hmm. And people were struggling with this idea. And so the Pope prayed for some kind of miracle, for a vision. 
And as he was praying over this host, a vision of Jesus Christ came up on the altar before him. And he was able to show that this became the body of Christ, this bread that they were eating. People are shocked as this scene of Christ as the man of sorrows appears on the altar. And then you can see all around Christ, there's a number of different symbols that are being used. And these are the arms of Christ. There are different indications of the passion, all of the different ways that Christ was tortured. We see the column where he was flagellated. We see the nails that he was stuck to the cross with. We have the pieces of silver that were given to Judas. There's a man spitting on him. There's the spear, there's the sponge that was soaked in vinegar. I mean, all of these torturous devices are kind of floating around, telling us the story of Christ. But what's kind of funny about this image is that it's been localized to Mexico. Yes. You see on the altar there, there's two little pineapples. I was wondering about those pineapples. <laughs> it's to say, this is happening in Mexico. This work is actually based on a European print by a man named Israel van Mechenem, who was a German printmaker. Well, if you take a look at the van Mechenem print, you can see that it's in a cathedral. There's a Gothic architecture behind this scene. But the way it gets localized for Mexico is that architecture gets taken away. Yes. The big churches hadn't been built in Mexico yet. This is only 20 years, maybe 20 years after the conquest and all of the services, the Catholic services were being held outside. Hmm, so we have this bright blue sky around Christ and around the altar. And as I said, those two little pineapples on the altar telling us this is the Americas, this is not Europe anymore. The arms of Christ also seem to come out of an indigenous tradition. If you look at a document like the Codex Borbonicus, there are these floating objects in space, in a blank space. And that's what served the Aztecs as writing. So both indigenous people and Europeans would read these in a way that made sense to them. It didn't seem out of place for Europeans to have these objects floating around in space, and it didn't seem out of place for indigenous people. They would read it as a story. It's interesting that they were thanking the Pope, then later he rescinded that. Yeah, he rescinded it uh, about a year later, and actually before this piece was finished. It was the, the Spanish crown and the landowners in Mexico who wanted to use indigenous folks as slave labor. So they were petitioning the Pope to rescind that bull. But he, they still presented it to him. So it was made in Mexico, and yes. it was being sent to the Pope in the Vatican, obviously. Yes. But as the ship was traversing the Atlantic, it got attacked by pirates. What? And we don't know what happened after that, but it showed up in an attic in France, just someone's attic, in the 1980s. No. <laughs> oh my goodness. And they sold it at auction, and a local museum purchased it. And unfortunately, it never reached the Pope. So this is attributed to Nawa, not one particular artist. That's correct. We don't know the exact maker of this piece. As I said, it was about 20 years after the conquest. Many of the Amanteca were still alive. Yes. Shortly after this piece was made, the Spanish banned the Aztec people from making any kind of feather works. Oh. They were worried about heresy. Because they were incorporating native traditions with European traditions in this work. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. So there was a concern there that it could be used for evil purposes. So it has been forgotten. This knowledge, the, the ability to make these is no longer around. What do students say? What did they ask? They are astonished. They had no idea that artwork of this quality and fineness can be made with feathers. I think a lot of them want to try it for themselves, and I certainly would encourage them to do that. Well, maybe you're inspiring a whole new generation of Amanteca. I certainly hope so. <laughs> for all of you watching, keep the conversation going in the comments, and I'll see you next time.